CVS is being sued for improper hiring practices in violation of a state law that forbids an employer from using a lie detector as part of the process of screening applicants. So this is a state law specific thing. Some states have different rules when it comes to hiring practices. And the state of Massachusetts says you can't use a lie detector as part of the hiring process. Okay. Well, CVS didn't use a lie detector exactly, but they did use AI to try to assess a person's truthfulness. So is that the same thing? Can you use the AI to detect truthfulness? Also, is the AI really good at this? Is also an unspoken of question, but let's learn a little bit more about this lawsuit and what CVS is being accused of. A class action lawsuit was filed in the great state of Massachusetts against CVS by a resident of that state who failed to get a job at the Rhode Island-based drugstore chain after completing an AI-assisted video interview conducted using a platform called HireVue. So CVS wants to hire people in many states. Fine. They use some sort of video interview AI thing, and the AI monitors the video to determine whether or not a person's being truthful. So is that the same thing as a lie detector? It is illegal as a matter of state-specific law in Massachusetts to use a lie detector to screen an applicant, but what if a company uses artificial intelligence to help assess a candidate's honesty? That's a good question, because if a person did this, that wouldn't really be a lie detector, right? If CVS hired you know, some people who were particularly good at screening people for truthfulness, which incidentally, people suck at universally. This has been documented over and over and over again. And even people who are supposedly good at this as a matter of profession, basically suck. So, you know, think FBI, think judges, think law enforcement in general. When they do these kinds of tests, and is this person telling the truth or are they lying? The professionals, only do about 5% better than the average man off the street. And the average man off the street gets it right about 55% of the time. So average guy determines truthfulness correctly about 55% of the time. Train professional, 60%, low 60s, okay? We are not much better than a coin flip at this. We are not good at this because amazingly, human beings are wired to detect deception and also wired to help undetect deception because we are pretty good at lying to people because we're really good at it. We've been trained a long time. So our ability to detect it and our ability to generate it are about on par. And so if we tried to hire a guy to do this, well, you know, that probably wouldn't go very well, but we could at least in principle, right? Well, what if we hire an AI and the AI is better than, you know, every human being, which wouldn't be that hard one would think because human beings suck. Is that the same thing as a lie detector? So if the AI is doing this, is the same thing as a polygraph with perspiration and heart rates. Is it unfair for employers to use a machine to help evaluate integrity? Or is it more fair than relying on subjective judgments of humans, which as I've been mentioning, is really, really horrible. Human beings suck at this. These are some of the questions that surround this class action lawsuit filed last month in state court, who failed to get a job at the drugstore after completing the AI interview. He is filing, of course, on his own behalf and as a member of a class of others who might also have not been hired for the same reason. The use of artificial intelligence is, of course, becoming more dominant in every aspect of people's businesses, including, of course, in hiring and firing. The AI will help solve our problems. So this, of course, fuels questions about how this interacts in the workplace and the harm. Calls for more rigorous testing and regulations, of course, from the government have been trying to be spawned by this. Some states, of course, are reacting to this. States can sometimes react faster to this than the federal government can. So some states have already gone on board and also the federal government, to some extent, looks at what states are doing as a matter of inspiration and as a matter of what things work, right? The laboratories of experimentation among the states. So sometimes the federal government kind of looks and sees what happens in various states. And then, you know, if things work well, they'll adopt it or use it as inspiration for their own ideas. 
So it's not surprising that some states are getting out ahead of this, and this will be refined as a matter of state law before it probably gets refined eventually as a matter of federal law. But by the time that happens, it'll probably be too late because the AI will advance so hard. Far, But, you know, let's pretend that we'll be able to get to this in time. The White House and other federal agencies have announced their commitment to looking at artificial intelligence. The EEOC is urging employers to analyze technology to make sure that the decisions are not discriminatory, warning that those responsible for it would be, of course, responsible for it. So if you use a tool, you're responsible for your use of the tool, which kind of makes sense. It's like, oh, the tool did it. No, not yet, at least, not legally. Maybe someday with the AI advancing. But for the moment, the employer is still responsible for their own decisions. So the AI hasn't advanced that far yet, but maybe later. It is unclear, of course, how laws that have been on the books for decades might apply to this novel situation because the laws were not designed for this. And this is a bit of a shift in technology in a way that, you know, will break some laws in sort of not being able to be applied readily. So our ability to read the law onto the AI in a lot of situations may be not so clear because this is such a new kind of technology. How much artificial intelligence can help or hinder in these processes, of course, remains to be seen. So it would be a bit weird to draw the conclusion that AI cannot be used, for example, as part of the hiring process, but how much? How, how much is it allowed to do? So how much does a human being have to be in the loop? And so forth and so on. Like a number of other organizations, including T-Mobile, Delta, and the Boston Red Sox, CVS has used these video in interviewing platforms to help screen job seekers. So this apparently is not you know, an unknown thing. This appears to be in many, many unrelated industries. So the video interviewing platform AI apparently used as part of this process. So, you know, okay. In about a third of the interviews, HireView uses AI technology to analyze integrity and honor, to help companies scale out lie detection and screen out embellishers. So, yeah, apparently a lot of companies are using this to help thwart people who are perhaps fronting more than they are really, you know, presenting good stuff. And how good is the technology one wonders on, on this? That's something I would want to know a lot. At the time this individual applied for the job at CVS, Hire Views AI enhanced interviews analyzed facial expression, eye contact, tone of voice, and inflection. So they are the body language expert people brought to AI. The body language experts brought to AI, oh, your eye moved this way, your eye moved that way, you had this tone, your eyes, your eyes moved. That shows deception. Uh-huh. I have to be admit, I have to admit, which will come as a surprise to no one who follows my channel with, with great attention, that I am very skeptical of this body language stuff. I, I have a lot of skepticism that you can read anything from a lot of this stuff. And that things mean things. I, I have a lot of skepticism behind the people who, who claim that they can do this as people. And I have skepticism on the AI. So I, I have my doubts personally. But that's perhaps a personal bias. CVS's use of the AI screening technology violates the state law according to the lawsuit, which notes that HireView, the AI, records candidates responding to a list of questions that could include ones pertaining to Austin. Such as, tell me a time that you acted with integrity. All the time, CVS. I'm nothing but a font of integrity. I, I'm acting with integrity as we speak. And what would you do if you saw someone cheating on a test? Snitches get stitches, yo. In a statement, Higher Review's chief data scientist said, our assessments are not and have never been designed to assess the truthfulness of a candidate response. Oh, you say? What are they designed to do? Instead, they say that HireView uses tools based on validated industrial organization psychology to help human hiring managers evaluate whether an applicant's answers are statistically linked to important work-related competencies while mitigating human biases. This is a more reliable and scientific way to focus on skills than simply believing what's written in a CV as they could be inflated by the writer. 
Yeah, I, I mean, uh, with all due respect to higher view over here, that sounds suspiciously like evaluating honesty, but with extra steps and in corporate BS speak. We're not evaluating honesty. Oh, no, no, no. We are uh, validated industrial psychology statistically linked competency. That's totally different than evaluating honesty. I don't believe you. And even if I did believe you, that would still be evaluating honesty, but just with extra steps. I think you might have a legal problem over here in Massachusetts. The AI understands the meaning of candidate's answers, does it? Does it really though? Okay. According to Higher View's explanation of assessments and considers the relative weight of words, job seekers who use the word team, for example, boost scores on teamwork. So basically we're just doing like tagging and metadata. So now it just becomes a question of the right metadata. So we figure out how to, how to fool the AI by just throwing in the right buzzwords. So this is just which buzzwords do the AI like? And if we use the right buzzwords, maybe we can get lessons on the buzzword speak from the, the team, from the AI people that we just talked about just now, because they seem to be really good at it with the BS wording. And we can get some coaches that will tell us how to use, how to use all the right words, team and synergy and you know, all that bullshit. And if we use enough of the words, the AI loves us. Wow. Higher View was also named in a recent lawsuit filed against a different company, but that case was voluntarily dismissed for whatever reason it was voluntarily dismissed. So who can say why, but we're giving it another go with CVS. And for all the non-subjective, unbiased analysis AI is supposed to provide, which, you know, I'm not sure I believe any of those things, because we've seen with AI that it can be programmed with bias in mind. We can see how it reflects the perceptions of its creators and moral perceptions of its creators. So unbiased, I don't know. Also, I'm not sure how good it is at that. But even if it were all those things, it would still only be as fair as the data behind it. In 2018, Amazon scrapped its AI recruiting tool after discovery, the system favored men over women. Yeah. Now, one would wonder, you know, just as a matter of pure policy, is it because the men are in fact better than women? Because then that wouldn't be discrimination on the basis of sex, right? To discriminate on the basis of sex, you are discriminating because they are a woman or because they are a man. But if through a purely objective evaluation, assuming such a thing were possible, if it just turns out that men are better than women or women are better than men, as the case may be, that would not be discrimination on the basis of sex. So one would wonder, you know, was it that the tool was just really good at its job, but we didn't like the answer? I wonder too. Despite these problems by various companies, including Amazon, these tools are, of course, popping up in lots of different employment because they promise fast, efficient, unbiased acquisition. It's important that employees who use these services invest in proper compliance and training and transparency. Uh huh. They've also cautioned against using AI too early in the process before a human is determined if a candidate is a good fit though they think initial screenings are also likely to be automated if they haven't already been. So yeah, AI in, consider, AI in resumes, AI in looking at resumes, AIs in job hiring, AI in evaluation, AI all the places. So yes, it is coming to all the places rapidly. Thus, that brings us to the end of this story about CVS being sued for the use of AI hiring, because maybe it's the same thing as a lie detector, which given Massachusetts specific law, maybe it is under the way that it's defined. So, you know, okay. And other companies are using this in various parts of the hiring process. And there you go. So we will see how this all develops as the federal government also looks at this technology for its validity and possible discrimination. And eventually the government will get involved by then probably too late because of how fast the AI technology is moving. So that's fun. And that brings us to the end of discussion of this tale.